Hello. Beep, 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 beep. <coughs> Welcome, good people, <laughs> to the court of the EDI Jester. How are we all? I hope you're well. Uh, become a teacher. Buy me coffee. Usual stuff. Right, okay, before we go on, <clears throat> there's a couple of things I want to cover just in this very quick update video. Uh, the first of them being, you may have seen, <clears throat> uh, doing the rounds, uh, an Italian article regarding criminal investigations in Italy for proponents and practitioners of gender medicine, right? Okay, which I use the word reservedly because I don't think there's any such thing, except afterwards when they mess with them. Uh, and I was uh, very pleased to receive this morning uh, from Agatha Rossi, or at Sicilian, I, well, I can't even say it, Ayetna, which all, it's all going to be in the Dubris downstairs, right? So you need, yeah. <clears throat> Hello from Sicily, right? So the article is a very long article that's in, in obviously in Italian. My Italian is rusty, to say the least. Um... The article is long and repetitive, so I've sent you a summary. So this, thank you very much, Agatha, for the summary, because it helps us to understand. This article is long. Um, Mariz, uh, right, Maurizio Gaspari, a senator from the political party Forza Italia, raised concerns about practices at Carigi Hospital regarding puberty blockers. And then we've got in brackets the words triptolerin, which is the name of the drug. This was raised last December in Parliament. So it strikes me as Italy is slightly behind us in terms of where they're at with this. The health minister ordered an investigation. An interim report was given to Gaspari this week, which he speaks about in the article. The finding was that triptorlin was administered without a single psychiatric ex assessment in children as young as nine. Not a single psychiatric assessment. They just gave him the puberty blockers at nine. Children and families have had their lives ruined. The use of triptorolin in children requires strict reporting to the Italian Medicines Agency, specifically to monitor for side effects. This should have been done for every child. It wasn't done. The hospital, regional authority in Tuscany and hospital management are all to blame. After the receipt of the interim report, similar to the CAS report, the prosecutor for Tuscany opened an investigation. New safe guidelines have been given to Corrigi for treatment of gender dysphoria, but it doesn't go into detail, not in the article as being said here by Agata. Gaspari states that this is only the beginning and that there will be serious consequences for all those involved, which has already started with the prosecutor's investigation. Gaspari also mentions the reputational damage to Corrigi Hospital and the Tuscan Regional Health Authority. Gaspari reiterates that Corrigi violated the rules for prescribing triptorolin and that he was correct to call for investigation. This is, a, this is a very similar take, isn't it, to the other things I've heard of in the past where you don't address directly the issue, you find some technical thing and start there. I think that's what's happening. They've gone, look, um, we haven't got much about this. We don't know much about it. We haven't got much guidance about this, but they should have done X. And not doing X, I think, is criminal. And they then begin their investigation towards a possible prosecution on that basis. I think it's going to be interesting to watch this unfold. So please do go follow Agatha, who will keep us up to date, I'm sure. Um, Ag Agatha then goes on to say, that's about it. It's similar to the UK. The mainstream media has been silent on this. But after today, it's gone mainstream and certain politicians are pushing for a total ban on puberty blockers. So it looks like Italy is going to do the same sort of thing as everybody else is now doing, except America who can't seem to get his ass together or, you know, completely across the board. Um, and also, very interesting notice here by Agatha, there's a huge difference between the north and the south of Italy in gender issues. With the south being more conservative in the approach to gender dysphoria, there is not really any institutional capture. In Sicily, there doesn't seem to be any paediatric transition at all. Many adults go to private gender clinics, but psychotherapy is mandatory. 
Thank you, Agatha. Yes, in response to your, I hope that helps. This does help, and I'm sure it helps the people that are watching today. That's the first thing, right? Second thing, related. Cass. Mm. Now, we're expecting Cass' report on, I think, Tuesday evening. Moving forward, Tuesday evening this week. First thing you need to know is this. The Gay Men's Network will have a response out for that. Right? They'll have a response out for that. So look out for that response. I think that'll probably arrive around about Thursday. Because everybody's going to have to read and digest it. I mean, that's, I'm not looking forward to reading it, to be frank, because I've got a horrible feeling I know what it's going to say. But that's just me being a miserable old goat, right? So the only other thing that I would say about the cast review when it comes out is don't get your hopes up, folks. It had a very limited scope, a very limited field of vision. And um, from what I can gather, it has been absolutely bothered by activists since the day it started. Mermaids were involved, for goodness sake. Mermaids, right? So mermaids were involved and, and they've effectively been influencing, but alongside other organisations, um, as can be seen in the statement that they've released. They released a statement that says the following, OK? Oh, it's so tiny, this text. In 2020, says Mermaids, NHS England launched an independent review of children and young people's gender service in England, led by Dr. Henry Cass. The review had a massive scope. No, it didn't. It had a very limited scope. And you, but you, and aren't you glad it did? So they're already lying, right? The review had a massive scope, including what care trans youth received. What? No such thing. We need to stop it. What? They, how they get to and through the how how they get to and through the service. What medical options are available? How to staff services and how to explain the changes in demand for the service. That is not a massive scope. If it had massive scope, you wouldn't exist, mermaids. They also commissioned a set of research from the University of York. Mermaids has regularly engaged with Dr. Cass. Have they now? While they're under investigation. Most importantly, through platforming trans children and young people's views directly to the team through a series of focus groups. That's it's my lived experience in it of the kids that have been captured by this and taken into the cult. They paraded them up and down in front of Cass as if that is anything to do with the whole situation. It's not because these kids are in trouble. Right. We know that. <sighs> through platforming trans children and young. There are no trans children. We have, however, been disappointed and the review's consistent engagement with the groups who deny the existence and legitimacy of trans youth. That's all they've got. Who deny the legitimacy and the existence of our made-up special people. That's all they've got. I just hope that Cass hasn't been battered because I know that you know, Dr Henry Cass is, from what all accounts that I've had from people who have met her or know her, a fine person who is attempting to do a very difficult job. I just hope to God it's what I hope it is and not what I think it's going to be. But caution, caution. Right, let's see what see what comes out of it. And then we can uh, we can decide what it is that's going to happen next. Well, I can. You can also decide for you. I'll see you later. All right. Have a great day. Bye.